it's super intentional. I know some people have like those stories of a bag of money fell into my lap. That was not my story. Yeah. I prayed for it. But then I realized, you know, after watching my dad play lotto for years and never winning, we had bags of those tickets in our house and he w- we could never throw them away. He would never check it and we never made anything. And I'm just like, you could have just done something with that. So one day he said, oh, you know, if we had just actually invested, which the man worked at a bank, this was not a far off concept, but you know, how many of us work in the area and don't do it? Yeah. Very common. And so for me, I grew up fairly, I don't want to say poor, but with definite limited resources. And I could probably say poor because we went thrifting before thrifting was cool. Things were cut off and it was just really poor money management. And I do think there was a place for that. And I think everyone should have one go round at experiencing poverty because it puts <laughs> things in perspective. But like I've I paid my dues. I've had mine. <laughs> exactly. I'll take it. Yeah, you had yours. I had my, you know, it's somebody else's turn. So once I was clear on that, it was like, okay, well, how do we make sure that this is a for real thing? And I started investing. Honestly, like that was my ticket out. It was in my control to choose what I put my money in. And I knew that if I didn't have resources, I could partner with other people and other companies and have resources. And until those investments worked, I could slim it out being an entrepreneur and something's going to work. Either the entrepreneurship is going to work or the investments are going to work. Something has to work. Mm -hmm. And you, what you do today or what you've done in the last few years, let's say, is that you teach other people how to make investments, right? Different types of investments. What types of investments are the most common that you you work on? So initially it started off with stocks because that was my entryway into investments. That was the one where you didn't have to have a high credit score. You didn't have to have a ridiculous minimum of thousands of dollars if you didn't have an advisor. Like if it was just you, you could do it. Um, And so that was my basis. And then at the end of that, I was like, okay, so what else do I want to do to have fun with my money? Then we laid on hotels. And we laid on hotels because I wanted to move, which I just moved into my dream home three years after wanting to move into my dream home, which is a whole other thing. But we had this money just sitting there and I call it a good problem. So some of us have bad money problems. Some of us have good money problems. Good money problems is when you have like 50K sitting in an account doing nothing. Mm -hmm. The money ain't working. You there working. The money isn't going out to work and it needs to be flipped. So we decided to invest in some hotels to make that money work. And then I invested in just random things like like SpaceX, not because I cared for the owner of it, but because I want to go to space one day and people look at me like I'm crazy. But now that I own spaceships, yeah. it could probably happen. Do you really want to like that? I do. I'm actually I working do. on something there. So let's talk about that. I will love you forever. Like, yes, I yeah, wanted to be an astronaut it. when I was five years old. Oh and my people gosh, were I like, didn't... no. I would have never guessed that about you. Send me a text message and let's talk about that afterwards. Okay. (laughs) So so then the big, the big piece here is that you, and and correct me if I'm wrong, you have retired your mom. Is that accurate? Okay. Yes. So first of all, how old were you when you did that? And can you say how old she was when you did that? Yes. So I just retired my mom. I'm 38. And I had the conversation with her um, on her 75th birthday, which is a lot older for a lot of people to retire. But in my community, retirement wasn't something that was brought up. It was kind of like you work until you die. Mm -hmm. Um, That's just it. You're a hard worker and you work until you die. There's no and there's social security, which never covers expenses. So she's always done something. And She even took out of her 401k just to put me through college. So she borrowed against her 401k to put me through college. So there was this unsaid agreement, at least I took it as, Mm. well, I'm the insurance policy and I'm the retirement plan. Mm. And um, I just started thinking about it about three or four years ago. So that's how long this plan took to actually take place. I thought either I could save for my mom's retirement, which is just not going to happen. Like I can't, you can't save your way to hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's not really that possible. Yeah. And so then I thought, well, I could just use what I've learned from myself and put it towards my mom. And that's what I did. So what does that mean? Take us through just so that, that. Yeah. So that means one, having an actual conversation. Right. And so a lot of us, we think about our parents as, you know, the, the person above us, the ones who've always made the decisions. But in this conversation, and when you start thinking about taking care of the people you love, the roles get a little flipped. And you want to approach it in a very respectful way. And so I did too. I said, your body isn't keeping up with your desire. 
Mm. You are worn down. We have tried therapy. We have tried, you have monthly massages. Like we are doing all the things you need to stop. You're doing too much. And she's like, but can I stop? And I said, I planned for this. So I started managing her 401k and retirement years ago. Mm. And um, I just, and she also got married right later on in life. Yeah. So then I had to deal with grown, grown up woman wanting to cash out her retirement for this beautiful one day affair, mm-hmm. which is okay for some, but also not okay if you don't have a lot of retirement, right? It's kind of, yeah, it's a little bit. Essentially you would be responsible for her if she needed money after that. And so I understand it. I know that like, I, I was thinking about what would happen if that was my mom and she would just get, she would do whatever that she wanted to do. I'll stop, stop with that. But it would be a conversation first. Cause I would say, okay, you can do that, but I'm going to be the one who has to replenish that. So do, what are we doing here? What are we going to call this? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's just like two grownups having a conversation. Yeah, so even yeah. then I had a conversation. I was like, so what we're not doing is liquidating everything. Yeah. And I said, I'm not going to tell you, I'm going to let you do what you want to do, but I'm going to keep a certain set aside. And thank God I did. Mm-hmm. And that just completely blew it out the water. So when we later had a conversation now, I showed, I created an Excel sheet. I said, let's just say you've got 30 years where we have to figure this out. And this is how much you're currently making. I will contribute like 40% and your investments will contribute another. You're old enough where you have to take distributions, right? Because there's a minimum distribution requirement once you reach a certain age. She's been having to do it, but I just never did it. I was like, no, no, we need to save it. Yeah. And so that's what we did. We created a schedule. Um, And so for a lot of people, when they have this conversation, it ends up being their hard-earned money. Mm -hmm. But the way I advocate it is if you can think about it like a couple years in advance, well, then you can start making investments with that in mind. Like right now, um, we just acquired a rental property, right? I'm a really big investor, right? So we just acquired a rental property yeah. this month. Like, yeah. like just like security deposit You're came in this week. It. You're addicted to it. I can see it's it. It's weird. It is though. It's like <laughs> I can see money it. growing when I'm doing nothing. Like yes. I just took a trip to Europe and I actually calculated how much money my investments grew while I was away doing beautiful things with my life. Yeah. And it grew like $8,000 in five days. Like, what the hell? I didn't do nothing. I, I didn't show up. I didn't. So it is addictive because once you understand the power of it, so now it's like, okay, we have this rental property and, and the tenant's paying and we're getting like, maybe, I don't know, it's nothing crazy. It's like 1300 a month plus. That 1300 a month, I'm going to take it and put it in an account for my kids. Mm-hmm. So it's like, but that's not my money. Like it's, it's my money now, but I didn't technically work for it. And when we sell it later, it's going to grow up in $300,000. And I just don't understand how it works, but it does like gravity. <laughs> you don't understand how it works, but you use it. <laughs> yeah, it's because... like, like the internet. Yeah. <laughs> I so don't how, understand how. It works. how. Speaking of that, how does someone who's watching this say, well, I want to do what you just said. How do they learn about, it? like, how did you learn to do this? So I started by just educating myself. I didn't really have a lot of money to make mistakes. I gave myself an allowance of mistake money, which at the time was like 500 bucks. I said, if this grows, then I know we're onto something. If I lose it, it's going to suck, but it's also not going to make or break the quality of my life Mm -hmm. like forever. Mm -hmm. So I had a little bit of pocket money set aside and then I took courses and I read. And I also, at the time, there weren't people who looked like you and I doing this, right? There's Warren Buffett. There's all the, quite frankly, older white dudes. Mm -hmm. But in my head, I thought money doesn't really see color in that way. Like, it's really interesting. It's There are paradigms, yes, that change who gets it, but the actual thing of money, it doesn't care. So I thought if money can hang around this person, why can't it hang around me too, Mm. right? I just have to learn what they learned and what to do with it because I don't actually have to ask permission from anyone to invest this, right? You got to ask permission at work. You got to ask permission. I don't know if you have an editor and you're writing a book, you have to ask a permission, all this permission stuff. But when it's your money, you, you actually... You are the decision maker of what to do with it. So all I had to do was figure out, well, what am I doing with this money? And then I educated, I read, and that's why I had an education. I created an investment education company because it was very hard in the beginning. People were bringing up terms that I had no idea meant. It would take me a whole day to figure out what the hell they were saying. Then I was like, why didn't you just say it was this? Yeah. You took so long just to say it, you know? And I think that's where being neurodivergent helped was mm-hmm. just that I understood a different way of looking at it. Mm -hmm. And so an example, I saw 
it as a Macy's one day sale when the market tanked, right? I was like, oh, it's a sale. Like stocks are 40% off <laughs> and I can cry yeah. about my 40% that I lost or I can, I can just buy more mm-hmm. and I can take advantage of it. Mm-hmm. So that's how I am with it. And that's how people, I recommend you start. You put a little aside and then you get educated. If you don't get educated, you have no advantage. Yeah. Then you're just like everybody else. Yeah, that's what I say about the your first million live um, passes. Sometimes they'll do sales and stuff, and someone will say, "I already paid the full amount. Do I get the sale?" And it's not. Well, no, it's a sale. Use the sale to bring your people in. You mm-hmm. know? Absolutely. Yeah, you just made me think of that. Um, so that's so interesting. So you do have a course, and I met some of your your students, and they are all just popping. You know, doing their thing. Um, so did the course make you money or was it the, did you have the course just to have something on the side? So the course was a side hustle. And I always tell people, some people want to just quit things and go straight into main hustle, but I'm an advocate of have a side hustle. And when the side hustle makes more than the main hustle, the side hustle becomes a main hustle. Yes. And then the main hustle becomes a side hustle. And then there's no more main hustle from the past. So that's what happened. I had a social media agency and that's how I was making my bread and butter. Mm -hmm. And it so happened that I started talking about ownership over consumption. Mm -hmm. And as I was in the social media agency landscape, I kept thinking like, I hate that people are spending all their time on social and not engaging. Mm -hmm. But then again, I also own Facebook, which owns Instagram. And I also own LinkedIn at the time they were publicly traded. And I was like, you know what? Y'all paying me anyway. So, you know, have at it. You responsible. And so after a while, people started seeing my posts like, wow, I kind of just stayed in my pajamas all day. And I looked at the account and it went up 1200 today. And I have no idea how this happened. But these companies are making are working. Someone is out there working. And that's what happened. And then people started asking me. And I did a boot camp for three days, Arlen. And I've word vomited on these people for three days. I gave them everything I had to offer because it wasn't my main job. And people, their heads were spinning. They saw the possibility, but they were like, so now what? Can you help me do this? Can you check my homework? Can you, who do I go to to make sure I'm doing it right? Mm-hmm. And that's when the company started happening. That's when um, we started running programs and masterminds. Then people got the stocks. They became accredited. They started investing in things. And so it's really blossomed and And it's one of those things where I remember going to conferences as an investor, wondering how can I get in on these deals and people Mm -hmm. saying, yeah, I don't want to deal with you. Like you look too young or they were really saying I was too young, too black and too feminine. Yeah. I I, I thought you 10 years younger than what you just said. So I just didn't want to react. Do you not see the melanin in the skin? Like there's really no way for this to shake out. Yeah. (laughs) Let that linger for a little bit. <laughs> like, not not a problem in the imposter syndrome side of things. <laughs> so so you were able. What happened when you reached this moment where you retired your mom? How did she feel? Was it like a big thing, or was it sort of like another Wednesday? It was a really big thing. Okay. And the go getter in me wants to treat it like a Wednesday because I have I'm very goal oriented, and for a lot of us high achievers that's just the way it is. It's like on to the next, but this one was really profound because, you know, I'm, I'm an African-American, right? Caribbean descent and work to me is also another form, especially if it's some work that you're not proud of, or you don't enjoy, it's another form of enslavement, Mm -hmm. right? You have to be there. And so for me to tell my mom that, that she is not a slave to her circumstances anymore, like my blood temperature is rising right now because it's, mm. and especially for me, I was also the kid that messed up a lot in school. Like, like she had to sign papers. <laughs> I mean, I was cutting school in like second grade because I was like, y'all not teach me what I want. Ooh. In high school, I had a, like a no homework policy. I would go, now it's cool to educate yourself. Yeah, you but, were just brilliant. I bet you were just, a, you were just not stimulated in those classes. You were just like, what's this? What y'all no, doing? you're right. I was not, <laughs> but you know, for, for a Christian mother, that is very trying. So she would take me to church. She would get the Holy oil. She would pray to God and let me hear, what did I do God to deserve this? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I ended up thinking like, I'm her investment and me telling her that she no longer has to work and showing her an account with her name on it, with like multiple six figures in it. Yeah. Like 
like like the look she gave me was like a lot of money look yeah it's it goes back yeah to the, the your dad with the with the scratch offs with yeah a lot of money like you you did the jackpot mm -hmm. a different way yeah 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 and that's so cool it was great it is great you know she's even here now and because she's not working she's able to help me and um you could go spend up her own money do her own thing Yeah, like just treat hanging the grandkids out. to Just whatever do hang it. out I love that. So I know that this has inspired a lot of people. As we close out here, I want to just make sure people know if they're watching this before April 10th, they can see you at your first million live on the main stage at the Peacock Theater, which is awesome. This is going to be so, Yes. so cool. Uh, and and what what can they expect to to learn? Well, just kind of tease a little bit of what they can expect to learn. You're going to learn how I did it in record time. So how I've created seven figures of passive. And I say passive because I don't like active money. I need the money to grow without me having to do something. So I'm going to show you how to create seven figures passively and create your own plan. And I'm going to break it down in a way that has never been broken down to you. Everyone who sees this presentation, their life changes. I get messages all the time. And they're just like, this was the missing piece that I was looking for. Why had no one explained it to me this way? So the next opportunity and probably the only one that you will hear in this way is going to be happening live at this conference. So you need to be in the room. And that's really one of the secrets that I have for my successes. I make sure that I'm in the room because if you're not in the room, you can't get the message. I'm just the envelope, right? But there is a message for you here. Wow. Wow. We'll leave it at that. Wonderful. Please say your full name, how people can get in touch with you after. And of course, they'll see you at your first million live. Yeah, so Ange Matthews, founder of the Happy Investor Method. You just go to happyinvestormethod.com slash we met. You can get a free private podcast and it's going to be pretty dope. So go check me out. I'm not that famous on social because I live my life and I don't really need to shake my butt on it. So there's that. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Text me about I know you have thoughts. Text me about going into space. We'll talk about it soon. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see Thanks, you. Arlen. This was so much fun. Bye. See y'all in LA.